Okay, for people joining this live stream, we are uh, in the process of finishing some pieces of version 12 of Orphan Language, and we are tidying up loose ends and so on, and this one has to do with cryptography. Uh, we've introduced some new cryptography functionality for blockchain operations, and we are trying to make sure it's properly integrated. Okay, so this is our traditional public key crypto stuff. Okay. You know, I have to say that this shortening thing is not the most beautiful. We should one day try and do something about that. That looks a bit we weird. We could show Byter instead, uh, other than that. No, 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 no. Or we'll not it's, show it's, them at all, because... I think Stephen is more talking about, like, maybe a dot, dot, dot ellipses or something. Yes. Maybe I mean, not it's show a, them. It's a long number. But yeah. yeah, maybe don't show them at all, because they don't make sense here. You know, you don't see them, and they don't. Well, get... I mean, you are effectively seeing a hash of them by seeing the first few digits and the last few digits. So to know whether they're the same as something else is useful. So I don't just, I, I don't think you know to see that that's the same as this is useful. I usually that... see at the picture, at the, at the icon. What is the icon? The icon is the. The icon is the representation of the key. So if the icon is the same, then the key is the same. Yes, I know, but you can see that the public key is the same in this case. The private key is missing from the public key. Right. Yeah. Right. So I think it is useful. I'm, I'm merely commenting on the uh, the angle bracket thing. Mm -hmm. So what's the decision? Like have a dot, 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 or are you okay with the 610 there? Or? Uh, it's okay. It's it, Look, I think in general, we should review whether short should have... Uh, can we put it on the ILD agenda to review what the visual appearance of short is? Yeah, Carla, that's an action item. Yes. The appearance of short. Okay. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Of integers. Yes. Okay, let's look at elliptic curves. Okay, so this is now new. So and you want to type, type there an elliptic curve with the, the name of the uh, specific elliptic curve in parentheses? Okay, Carl on our live stream is, is supporting the short should look nicer in the front end. Good. Okay, so now this is... Okay. You're showing that and... Um, yep, this and looks if good. Open, if you open yeah. it up, then there's the... Private multiplier and public curve point, which are integers. Well, that integer is a bit disappointingly unshown, but... Is it a single integer then? It's a pair of integers. Pair well, why does it say angle back at one then? Uh, again, it's appearance of short. Yeah, same issue. It's one line. Short, short is a one line. You know. Yeah, I know. I know what it's doing, but um, I, I don't think short did that in the case of if I just do, you know, a hundred factorial, two hundred factorial, and then I say short of that. I'm surprised if it generates. Um, Oh, wow. Well, that's yeah. just a bug. I mean, that's so, stupid. By the way... No, it's the number of lines. It's the number of lines. It's not the number of lines. It's not, Arno. It's simply not. But it was. No, but it's it not. I wrote this code back in, like, 1987 or something. No. Are you saying it's the argument count? Yes, it should be but the argument it? count. It should be the argument count. Maybe it should be two, two things like this. Um, well, there but... should be one... No, it should be the argument count. If I say short... Of range of a thousand, ten thousand, or something. See, it's the number of omitted arguments, and the number of omitted arguments in this case is two because nothing is shown. Right, so it's a it's a bug of some kind. So an idea, another idea that to show a short of integer for this key case, you is to is to use a picture again, uh, like spark spark line, or maybe this icon type. So instead of looking at the That's numbers, not hyperventilate about this right now. It, it's not. It would be nice to get this right, but I think it will be mm -hmm. gotten right when short is improved. Okay? okay, let's not solve that problem for this. Okay, All okay. Right. So let's keep going. This looks good. No, the message is uh, basically the text that you, you're using wrong keys. Um, yeah, that's the message you wanted. We may want to support elliptic keys uh, later, but um, we will need to investigate what kind of algorithms are there. It okay. doesn't seem that... not available for elliptic curve. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just thinking about the wording of this. Um, 
Okay, it's all right. Okay. Scroll down, there is a table. Carl on our live stream is rightly asking, why isn't this method error elliptic curve? Yes, you can use that. This is a shorthand for that. You can, can't you? You can say method error elliptic curve. Yeah, it does the same thing. This is just a shorthand for that. Um, okay, so let's keep going here. Uh, So some properties are in the key and some properties are computed on the fly. Okay. All right, so if I, if I look at one of these, if I say input form, okay. So is it true that this is a repeat then? So public byte array is a repeat for public curve point, is that correct? Yes, yeah. Okay. Do we so care that it's a repeat or do we? The argument is uh, repeating data is not a good, uh, usually is not a good thing, but uh, it doesn't take much space, so it's, it's harmless. It's pretty small and it's it's so commonly used that we don't want to make it, you know, okay. we don't want to compute right, it on fine. the fly. So you might as well just compute it once and have it there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did we agree that compressed was going to be the name for that? By the yeah. way, I assume. What's that? I think we did. Um, By the way, I assume Daria is here, yes? Was that yes, Daria? I am. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, and that's the way it's referred everywhere. All right, okay. 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 Oh, so these these lengths are united variables. Uh, is yes. that what we've One done? Quantity. Yeah, yeah, that's your yes. Um, but you didn't say your preference on it, so we just chose quantity. We can change. Is that what's been done for RSA as well? Um, if I say, uh, in this case here, um, let's see. And now I say that. Now, what would I? What would be I be asking? If public key length. Private key lengths. Public key lengths. But has that been implemented yet? Because that's not. That's what the heck is that? What is that? Okay. Yeah, that's a bug. That's a bug in quantity. So we have to screenshot. Okay, but that's in bits anyway. It's a united quantity, so you're doing the right thing. Okay. Yeah, it's supposed for us to do the same thing with fairly precurs, just showing the quantity. Okay. All right. Okay. So Is that what do we correct do? that bytes shows on B, not as byte? Um, it's in bits. Yeah, in bits. Yeah, I mean bits shows as B. Yeah, probably okay. But that's not for looks, this meeting to discuss. Yeah. I mean, looks weird to me, but it's fine. Um, question. I mean, I, 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 look, are you saying that even in 11.3 that the private key length for RSA was given? So, so if I say generate symmetric key, I'll get the same. I, I just don't know. I'm, I'm assuming that you're just copying what was already done. Is that correct? No, we implemented this. It was. Well, what, no, symmetric key is the same, yeah. Wait a minute, what's that called? What's that element called? Private key length. No, for a symmetric key. Just key. I don't think it exists. Just key. It, it, that's not implemented yet. If we're going to do that, we have to we have to add that. that that's just... It's just key. It, it makes sense to do it, but it's not, that's not you know, in this package. I have to say, I think we should just use integers. Because I think for these cryptographic things... You know, it's always bits. I think it's pedantic to say bits because it's not going to be big enough. We're not going to have a megabyte of key. He says, if, in his last words. 
Mm, I disagree with that. Okay. Because uh, so the, you can use it in two different ways. You can use in mathematic in mathematics writing, uh, writing some mathematical algorithm like prime prime numbers composition. Then you use you you need integers. However, for practical users, everywhere people refer as byte sequences, as octets. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm asking a different thing. I'm mm -hmm. simply asking, should we return the key length as an integer or as oh. a quantity? That's all I'm asking. Oh, oh yeah. Um, yes, key length. I think we should probably return it as an integer. Just an integer, yes. Mm -hmm. Because it's always... It's always, um, it's so always in bits. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's let's change that. And here we should support key length as well as a property for symmetric key. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carl here on our live stream is saying he always prefers united quantities and he would wish his absolute timing returned quantity seconds. I completely agree. It would be even better if we had a time machine so we could go back and fix that from when absolute timing was first introduced, but yes. Um, but I don't think in this case, I don't think, I don't think you're gonna be wanting to combine these bit lengths with other things. That's why I'm thinking that they should just be integers, but I might be wrong. Um, we can have a property. How that can be used and then divide the our. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, if Carl on our live stream. Is, is, go, uh, go ahead. Uh, well, my idea was that, like, what I understood from your wish is that public key length is supposed to be used as a, you know, information to yourself how long it is. Yes. So if it's just information to yourself, it's fine with quantity. If you want to do some computation with it, it's probably going to be just going to be convenient. Yeah. I mean, like, for example, if you say, I wonder what happens if I take that quantity in bits and I say two to the power of that. What on earth do I get? Well, you get some kind of stupid bug right now, but but notice that that doesn't... For, for example... But what kind of unit do you, do you expect? I don't really know. I mean, I'm expecting a combinatorial thing, but okay. Hmm... Let's loop back to this. I'm not sure what to do. Uh, somebody is asking on the live stream whether there is new capability for working with blockchains. And I'm happy to report that there is a lot of new capability for working with blockchains. Lots of wonderful things here. Um, very sophisticated stuff for doing um, generating addresses, signing and validating messages. It's all there. In fact, we use the elliptic curve stuff specifically for that, right? This is how... What is this? This is a blockchain transaction sign. What is that? How do you, how do you a transaction that you are the one who are sending this transaction and so on and so on? But where did you get that key from? Is that generated from was that generated using generate? No, how was that key generated? Mm. I don't know. We didn't work on this blockchain page. Yeah. I asked Christian to join, but he had an appointment, so he's going to be real late if, if you want to discuss blockchain. Okay. Oh, yeah. look at that. I, I'm not sure I've seen this where it says fee. Is this what we agreed that just the word fee is in red? That's also probably a question for Christian. No, I mean, what that means is if you if you submit this thing to the blockchain, you are spending 7,000 Satoshi, and that's yes. an attempt to tell you that. Um. We better not put that in the automated test suite then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> I'm going to get a big bill at the end of the year. Uh, right. Well, although on the test net, the, what, what happens, I don't quite understand on the test net. Why is that fee in red of the test net? Well, I don't know. Um, it, that's just um, like a virtual, that, that's not an actual fee then, right? In the case of the test net, that is correct. Okay, let's continue here. Okay, ref pages. These would have been nice as links. So do you think you've you've got these ref pages all straightened out? No. 
not yet. I, I just haven't had time yet. We had two meetings. And just, okay. Okay. I mean, I, I'm mostly just learning from diary. I'm like, well, hmm. this is what I already wrote, right? I did this last time. Yeah, but I think there was a, another table we needed to add, right? But, uh, let's see. Or was the the type is similar to both, and we might add properties. Okay, for listen. If you call it key size. It's not us. It has been there. Then it isn't a bit. Yeah. Um, so okay. You know what? What are you guys telling me? This is already. I asked you. Was this already done? And the answer is yes. It's already been done. So please don't change it. Um. I don't think this was changed, right, Daria? Yeah. Okay. So so in that case, please don't use units because we didn't use it already. It says <laughs> key size, and then. What is this? Generate asymmetric target size of key in bits. So which key is that? It's a never say key. Okay, but in the case of in the case of of um, elliptic curves, is there not uh, is there no longer a single number there? Are there two numbers that we have to give? Mm -hmm. <coughs> no, in the case of elliptic curve, you cannot specify a key size because it's uh, defined by the field of elliptic curve. By the curve. Okay. It's the table for RSA, which is, you know. No, I understand that, but we want a compatible thing. What it, What is the thing, what is the accessor that you are providing for elliptic curves? This is, no, no, growl. Look, this is called key size. For key some size? bizarre reason, this is called key length. We got to have it be consistent, right? Yeah. Okay, so generate, if we look at generate symmetric key, I bet that that has a key size, right? Automatic size of key in bits. Okay. So we just need to change that then to public key size as an integer. Well, hold on, hold on. When this says key size for RSA, what does that key size refer to? The private key or the public key? Uh, Daria? Um, I'm not sure I didn't implement this. Okay. I think it's both, actually. Okay, because they're the same size? Let me look it up. Yes, they're both they're the same size. Is that obvious that they're the same size? Private export. I don't think it's obvious, but all right. So what we probably should do, and again, it will be good to Daria. Can you check into this? I mean, it probably what we're going to do. Want to say. If we introduce. So if we call it length, then it's definitely not going to be units, right? It's definitely not going to be unitative. If it's called length, it's going to be, um, you know, a, a number. If it's size, it could be unitive, but we didn't unit it before. So I, I think what we should do... Hmm. I'm wondering whether we should introduce key length as an alternative to key size and then call it private key length, public key length. Then for RSA, we're going to have to also support private key length, public key length, but they're both set to the same thing as key length. But please it check. It might be different in a few bits. You in know? what? So one may be 247 and another may be 2041 or 2048. Okay, but it's, so it's coincidental that they were the same in this particular case. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Well, then, then this is wrong that we've had that we have private. That then, then okay. My key feeling, size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Key size and key lengths uh, sound. I don't. I don't see the difference. So uh, we can just keep uh, rename key key lengths and key size. And uh, no, but, but the difference. Is this if it's called key length, then that is going to be an integer. Nobody is going to be confused by that being an integer. If we say key size, arguably that should be a united quantity in bytes or in bits or whatever. Mm. See what I'm saying? 
I don't know, yeah. Why why would I expect you in it? I, I don't see an argument. But we have to keep key size the same for backward compatibility. We right? do, but we could retire key size and rename it key length. I don't know. There may have been a good reason why it was called key size originally. I think Christopher would probably know that. And um, key size is the same thing as, as what? As the public modulus length or something else? Well, as uh, we see... That's a sorry evaluating. question. I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, as we see by evaluating the functions, it is actually public modulus because private can be a few bits uh, smaller for some reason. Okay, then I think what we should do is... What I think we should say, um, we should make it be public key length. Somebody's typing in our ear, by the way. Public key length, private key length. And in the case of, of symmetric key, we should have something where we can, where we call it, where we rename it key length, although we continue to support key size, that all of these things are pure integers. Okay. And in the case of, um, we continue to support key size here. But we, I mean, but we de-document it and we instead document public key length, private key length. Make sense? Daria, Arnaud, Constantin? I, I think so. Tyler, did you get that as, a, as an action item or do I need to write it? No, I got it. So we keep key size, but we undocument it. So it'll still, still work. And then key length will be the... the, the an integer. Yes. It will be good to send one email to Christopher and ask him whether he had a profound reason for choosing key size rather than key length for the name of this, this field. And then, this, and then what does it relate to in the actual keys that we have? I mean, it, does it relate to the public modulus length at that point? I, I don't know. That's a question about RSA that I don't know the answer to. And hopefully Daria can figure that out. Yeah, I will check the code. But it seems like it's a public. Right. Or ask Christopher, who might or might not remember that level of detail about this. Um, okay. Uh, My feeling is, just if I can say that, the it's nice to have a correspondence between what you know, what you see in the summary blob, the summary box. You know, like when it's called public modulus length in the summary. Oh, heck, heck have that yes. To match, well, yes. Match the document. Right, I agree with if you. The names are so if the names are so different, you don't really know. You okay, can so never know. I, what. I agree with you. That's wrong. When it says public modulus length, that should just say public key length, private key length. So that's exactly uh, right in the they, summary blob. Is but is a modulus the same thing as a key? I'm not sure if that's true. I think it is. Yes, these, these are all parameters, right? Like I would say public key consists of two things, which is modulus and the public exponent, which is the last thing on the blob. So like I would say public key is compound. Oh, I see. Oh, boy. Okay, that may be why it's called size rather than length, because we're trying to avoid the confusion about digit length. Okay, so in this case, in the case of, of, of uh, elliptic curve, oh boy, okay, so I'm beginning to come back to wanting to call this public key size. Unless it's a length in bits, is it a length in bits of this number in this particular case? Yes. But what if, but then this compressed versus non-compressed thing, is it really the key length, or is it the length of each individual uh, coordinate in the public curve point? It is the size of a curve point. So like 507 is one coordinate plus second coordinate. Wait a minute. The public length has both coordinates in it, has, is representing both of those together. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm changing my mind again. This should be public key size to avoid the confusion of the length of the digits, right? Because otherwise, yeah, it should be size. That was the so right It's thing. public key size. Private key be in, size. In, in bits or bytes or like, 
as an integer. I think we already crossed that bridge. I think it has to be an integer. And then the integer integer represents what? Exactly what it is right now. It's it is if you look at the hex string, if you look at the byte array, it is so the number of base two bits to represent that twelve quadrillion nine hundred and three. Yeah, yeah. This is a trillion. It's much bigger than trillion. The, <laughs> I know that. Um. Oh is it going to crash? No. Okay, that's what it is. Um, sure. Maybe we should just represent it like that. Like this. I think that's a bad idea. <laughs> the, um, okay. Uh, okay, so public key size, an integer, and we leave everything that we talked about before. Okay. But it's still 507. It's 507, yes. Okay, it's still the exact bits, the, the smallest number of bits you need. Exactly. To represent the number. Okay, right. generate symmetric key should be exactly the same. There should be no change needed to this. Okay, by the way, do you support this business about passwords and byte arrays? For generate asymmetric key pair, can you give it a password? Oh no, you're giving it a type here. Because in this case, notice that well, in the case of symmetric keys, so Daria, question, there's no seeding of the asymmetric key. Is that right? Yes. Uh, it just takes randomness. Yeah. And the reason for mm -hmm. that is that it's like you've got to find a prime and things. It's not like you get to, in this case, with the symmetric key, it's kind of like anything can be ground up to make a symmetric key. I think uh, right? it, it is possible to support a password for a generate asymmetric key bar. So generate symmetric key that uses password uh, in the sense of a, of a seed. So if you give the same password, you get the same key. But if you don't give the password, then it, it draws randomness from a system random generator. And asymmetric key for RSA does the same. So without the password, it just draws randomness. But if you give password, then yeah, I'm not sure if well. So, so wait a minute. What it's doing, doing here is it's using stuff. a key derivation function from the password. But I don't think you can use that. I think that asymmetric keys are sparse, whereas symmetric keys are dense. Asymmetric keys are sparse. But maybe that's not true of all methods. About RSA, I don't know. About the elliptic curve, a symmetric key can be any number from one to basically the size of field, almost. So we can try to force uh, randomness with the password. So instead of password, we should say seed. And for uh, for us, for uh, elliptic curves, we could probably this use the same idea. Um, just to okay, but look at the syntax here because generate is symmetric key. You're just feeding that string in. And right now, for generate asymmetric key, you're putting in things like elliptic curve here. For asymmetric key, you use random. You don't you don't feed the password because I haven't. Yeah, actually, I haven't seen that anybody would do that. No, you, I don't know a use case. Although it is interesting. So Daria, if you do that, feed a, a seed to the elliptic curve for generate asymmetric key pair. What are you going to get? Are you going to get something? How does it reflect the seed? Do you understand my question? We, we, we could use the process as we seed like our random integer and other functions. Oh, I see what you're saying. We could seed the randomness. Oh, wow. We don't use uh, random our, seeding. Our, our random generator. Yes. Or what we could do, we could take a password and do some like things like HMAC or something like that out of it. Yeah, that's what it's doing here. So much. So, but, but, but can you feed an HMAC output into the elliptic? You're saying you can pick any point on the elliptic curve. Well, you can put any multiplier, which is, yeah, pretty a big range of things. So you can try to make an HMAC and then convert it to integer. 
and then that would be your private multiplier. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but, but one thing this is this leads me to is the fact that there probably should be a random seeding option in these functions. I mean, it's kind of weird. It's kind of crazy. So the thing is, um, random seeding does not apply to system randomness. If you want cryptography, strong keys, then you don't use... Uh, no, no, then you're crazy, right? I mean, yeah. if, if you say random seeding arrow one, two, three, four, you will always get the same. I mean, the advantage of doing that is that yes. for testing and so on, you will always get the same asymmetric key pair. Yes, yes. I think that would be useful, but um, it, you would not use it for real cryptography. No, yeah. you'd be crazy. It, totally bonkers. I mean, well, yes. to be more accurate, if you thought you had a high entropy source of randomness and you didn't trust the high entropy source of randomness on your computer, then you could then you could use this. Mm -hmm. So let's investigate introducing random seeding here. Then you should use we should also add random seeding in generate symmetric key. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Another thing for getting yeah. the same key all the time is what we're planning to do, is what we're having somebody's private key in whatever form just to generate a public one out of it. And that will give you the same public key every time. Is what? Is if you give a private key? Yeah, so we plan to, I mean, it's already kind of in the code, but we plan to make it better and uh, improve it and expose it. F given your private key as an integer or a string or whatever, generate a public key. No, no, not as an integer or a string. As a, as a private key blob, I would say. Uh, that also. But because, I, because otherwise, syntactically, it's not going to work, right? Because what you've got to do, okay, so let, let me walk, walk me through this. Because what you're saying is, if I say public key of private key, blah, 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 that's supposed to work. Is that right? No, it's just I'm saying for the future. Instead of that's... forcing the seed, we should just make a separate function for generating a public key out of... Why, why is it a separate function? Why don't you just say public key of private key? That would then generate a public key from the private key. I mean, you have enough information in the private key symbolic object to do this. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that, that could work, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be nice. I mean, it would also be useful for people understanding what the heck's going on to see that that's possible. Um, you want it for this version or for the next one? No, 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 no it's not for this version. <laughs> um, None of this. The random seeding thing on this is definitely not for this version. Okay? I mean, for this version, we, we are hopefully at the end here. Um, by the way, uh, Carl on the live stream is asking whether he can feed an image to generate symmetric key. What's the answer as a password? Well, notice that here we say quotes password, but generate derived key. What does generate derived key? Does it allow... An image. It allows byte arrays. It allows uh, just lists, so you can feed an image if you represent it as. Uh, no, no, I don't want to do that. Why, why, why doesn't it just allow me to feed an arbitrary random piece of junk here? Um, because there are different ways to interpret that, and I should not assume which way you want. Because I can stretch this image in a, in a stream of bits and use that. Or I can do a hash. Why don't we have a canonical way to do it? Um, there is no obvious way. That would be okay, so, so the main point is that ger generate derived key. Okay, hold on. Let me understand. Why don't you just use hash of image and then feed that to derived key? That will work. It's a canonical way. We document. We should probably write that. Put that in the documentation. It's a reasonable way to do it. Yeah. If we hash the owl, although we need to, uh, you know, we'll get in trouble with the, the owl preservation. Uh, folk. Um, it will not take an integer. It will take a string. A string yeah, or, So you need to you need to specify what kind of output for hash. That seems a bit messy. Uh, okay, this is a separate question. Why does generate derived key not take an expression? 
for this very reason, because there is no canonical way to turn expression into whatever you want. It, so it will be quite random, quite arbitrary uh, choice. We had this issue with encrypt as well. But encrypt succeeds in, in doing this, right? In encrypt, you're fine as long as you can decrypt. So when you generate derived key, um, Actually, I agree because the input for derived for derived key, the the first argument is your password. So if the image is your password, you should be able to use the image to verify it. Yeah. Well, so what happens if I use a, uh, the the owl to encrypt the owl? Does that work? No. Um, Okay, I, there must have been a good reason for this. I mean, this was extensively debated when we were building Encrypt originally. You can raise the question. Christopher would remember what the issue was with this. Why don't you ask him? But for now, we don't, let's not worry about it. Generate but you're device. using an image for for key, a derived key. That's a thing that's a possibility. I don't think it's any more possible than it is to use it for the password for Encrypt. They're, they're the same thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, let's keep going down here. Okay. So encrypt, the only thing we're doing here is that it doesn't work with, with elliptic curves, right? Otherwise, everything's the same. We didn't change yep. anything in encrypt, yep. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. generate digital signature. Did we change something in generate digital signature? Well, we made it from scratch. Well, I know that. I, I'm, I'm aware. But I mean, is there something that we have to change now? I meant change it relative to last week or whatever with respect to the documentation. No, not really. It just I revalidated all the examples and I uh, confirmed that they all work with the new changes. And that's what I just did. Okay, so we put in hashing method, all that kind of thing, signature type. Yeah, this we already did this documentation before. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, encrypted object. Nothing changed in encrypted object, correct? Because you didn't. You don't have any new forms of encryption. Basically, I just listed because there is a property, uh, properties that, uh, yeah. What are those properties? Properties option, we, properties property, which gives you a list of properties. <laughs> Sounds weird. Oh. It's for all, for all objects. And uh, I think uh, I mentioned it last time, but it was last, last I, I would, I don't think it's essential right now. It's already added, so if we agree on that, that's quite easy to do. Just yeah, it's implemented. Well, then it's why don't you just have it? Okay, fine, but then then put it in this table. List of available properties. Properties, quotes, properties, list of available properties, okay? Okay. I'll do it for this case. I think usually it's done separately, but okay. Is it? Yeah, I, whatever I looked at. It's because it's, it's a meta thing, right? It's like mm -hmm. it's the, the thing that lists all the, yeah, it's a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. Whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm okay. I mean, off the top of my head, I think it's, it's that's how. Yes, I, I looked at other pages. Yep, that's all awesome. right. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Brian on the live stream is asking, will the new crypto functions support the same algorithms as the major operating systems? Yeah, the answer is yes, I believe. Yes, um, they are. And, uh, and I believe they're all interoperable and they'll make PEM files and all kinds of things like this. Um, they also, coming later is interaction with the system keychain. That's coming in 12.1. Yeah, in fact, so, uh, both um, derived key and hash and encryption, we verify against uh, known uh, test vectors. So it, it generates the same data. Right. It's part of the test suit, yeah. Are all FIPS compliant algorithms supported? Does anybody know the answer to that? No. Stored. Not like the FIPS compliant thing is this one elliptic curve, for example, but there are like a dozen of them. You know, a the dozen FIPS what? Compliant. A dozen FIPS compliant elliptic curves? Yes. What does it what is involved in getting um 
uh, what's involved in in um, in supporting other elliptic curves? I just need more time to you know test if all these functions can actually work with them because different elliptic curves are just the sake of you know different side of field and different generating generation of group. So they might work easy, but I didn't have time to really. Yeah. Okay, fine. So it's a matter of a uh, way to represent the curve and then uh, generalizing the algorithms that we have to accept that, that curve. Okay, I mean, there's a whole separate thing about mathematically supporting elliptic curve operations. And and I believe Christopher wrote a package ages ago to do that. I don't know whether anybody's looked at that. Yes, we have that. We looked at it, and the thing that is in the packet now gives the same result. Okay. So but you can have but, but, yes. Right, but it but it's, it's the but the point of that was to expose the mathematical things like multiplying points and elliptic curves and so on. But I don't know whether we need to do that. But I think that's a whole separate issue. It's Thank a separate, you. yeah. It's it's a good idea. It's a separate issue. Maybe we should start off just putting it in the function repository. Um, okay, just a quick look ahead at these things. Oh, okay. So Carl on the live stream is asking about importing PEM files. Um, yes, it should import as a private key, public key pair, right? Is that does that work right now? It doesn't. It will be in the next release. Just didn't have time to do. Okay, I but experimented, that, but there are there are issues with it. So I'm... okay, so we're not supporting it at all there. N not currently, no. But it will. It's in the list. Okay, but it, but what will happen is you say import of the thing and it will give you that same association that generate asymmetric. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. the plan. Yep. Okay, nice. Um, okay, I thought we already had HMAC from no. generate. Isn't that what generate derived key is doing? No, no, it's a different thing. Uh, really? Generate derived key, the, the whole point is that it is slow. It must be slow. And... Um, uh, the other functions, they must be uh, uh, fast, so it's a different algorithm. But I thought HMAC was intended to be slow. Uh, it's No, it, it, it's, its purpose is different. Okay. What is this? Encode? Yeah, encode is a mess. Oh, yeah, so I spoke to one of the users, and he wants to encrypt the package and then on the another computer to be able to get well, the package. I mean, the fact is what we really need to do is to that that's part of the code obfuscation, you know, code yeah. encryption stuff, which we need to I, I guess this group should probably take that on. I mean that was a whole discussion about code um uh and, yeah, package. yeah actually so it, it it was mentioned to me several times i just need some official go for this so i can work on it but, but there's more to this there's the whole drm thing let's separate meeting okay, okay to discuss how to do this um and then we we get to test whether it's security by obscurity by whether we think we can live stream that meeting um the uh um okay Let's see. Um, let's see. Carl on the live stream is asking about exporting to to PEM files. Yes, I, that, that's part of the plan is to be able to export a private key, public key pair. That's bullet file. point four from the top. What's that? That's bullet point four in this list. Oh, import and export of PEM files. Okay. Yes. Brian on the live stream is asking about Windows.cer files. It's the same same thing. Yes, it's different format. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so that's also part of the plan. PMC, yeah, all of those. Okay. Compressing and decompressing elliptic curve public keys. It's yeah, also that something that is already implemented, but not, you know, as good to be exposed, really, because that's what it's doing inside the code. Well, I don't even know what this means. Is this the... Um, with the so, compressed true and false, is that right? Yes. Like going from one forum to the other. Like converting from one form to another. Why does one care? Um, different implementations of some, um, uh, for example, cryptocurrencies might use both. Well, but then what we should do is to have a property that you can extract that is called compressed public, key, you know, public curve point and and uncompressed public curve point. We don't need a separate function. I mean, that's just a that's just an public, access or what? So public curve point is always uncompressed. Compressed is gives just one coordinate. 
Okay, fine. Well, so so just have a different accessor for the um, uh, for the keys that give you the the single coordinate. Is what I would think about doing. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think okay. So. Um, do we really need more hashing algorithms? You said it's a low priority. It will be yeah. okay. I, I mean, I would also like to point out that I would like to see an, in in the symmetric key thing, an encryption, I would like to see some classic encryption schemes. I think yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's, it doesn't belong to hash, it doesn't belong to encrypt. It does belong to encrypt. A Caesar cipher is, happily belongs to encrypt. You say generate symmetric key for a Caesar cipher, and it's not very secure exactly, but then you feed that key into encrypt, and it will encrypt by using a Caesar cipher. But it, it's a different type of key, and it actually does not quite fit to the function. So we need... why, why is it a different type of key? Why? Substitution key? Um... No. It's, it's, look, look, the question, no, with, with respect to this method, you know, cipher arrow Caesar, and then it's got all kinds of random junk here that says, you know, right? I would think. It's just a different choice of... Of, I mean, for these methods, it so happens that the same things are supported here, but an initialization vectors and so on are supported. But I think for these other ones, like Enigma, for example, I mean, I'm sure Enigma has, I think Enigma has an analog of an initialization vector, doesn't it? It does. Right. So, I mean, and in fact, an Enigma is really no different, is it, from like a random AES cipher or something? It's just a simpler version of it, isn't it? Or am I wrong? Well, simply yes, just substituting a lot of things. IIS does it gradually. This is just, you know, basically randomizing stuff. Right. Okay. Good. Well, anyway, I mean, I, I thought we had summer school projects and things where people had implemented stuff like this, and I'm surprised we can't just plug it in. Mm -hmm. I, have, I haven't seen those. Okay. Yeah, well, maybe it's something for Daria to look at at some point. Um. Uh, don't spend too much time on it, but it will be a nice thing to have, I think. All right, sounds good. I think we we are we are in good shape here. Um, lots of stuff to look forward to for the next version. Hopefully, this is not too time consuming, but these are super useful, and certainly the PEM file thing is really needed. Okay. Um, and I would put that as the highest priority of this of this stuff. I think the general elliptic curve support will be nice, but um, I think the PEM file thing is really important. We need that for a bunch of uh, uh, you know, cloud computing stuff and so on. Okay. Um, and then do right. you want to see the documentation one more time? I, I think there's a few more things that need to be tweaked, especially the... Why don't you just send me an email when, when you have it ready? I'll take a look. Um, okay, I'll send you a screenshot. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Okay, good work. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you for folks on the live stream. A lot of useful comments there. Much appreciated. Um, all right, see you all later.